danger, darkness, and dwarves. Welcome to Deep Rock Galactic. I've had this game for 400 hours now, and I feel at this point that I'm ready to give a solid review about its gameplay. This game pitch you as a dwarf working for the company Deep Rock Galactic, an intergalactic mining corporation that's opened up operations on the very hazardous planet Hoxies 4. This planet is well known for its riches and wealth to be mined through the minerals that are on it, but it's also very well known for the bugs and hazards that it presents to the miners. It becomes very obvious after the first couple of missions that the corporation really doesn't care if their staff live or die on this planet. Make it snappy team. The drop pod won't hang around forever. All that they're really concerned about is the minerals and making as much profit as possible. In fact, it leads to a rather canny sense of humor in the game that I find quite entertaining and quite enjoy. Barrels are to be left alone and not hurled, kicked, tossed, or in any way moved around. Stop it, now! The main hazard in this game is the darkness, and it is a very unrelenting, deep-seated darkness that exists virtually everywhere in the caves. All characters in the game come equipped with a standard headlight, but it's not very good and unless you like only seeing a few feet in front of your character, you're going to find that the flares are a lot more useful very quickly. Each dwarf is equipped with four flares that can be thrown to light up an area around them. These recharge over time so you won't actually run out of them, it just prevents the player from throwing them in mass. They don't light up a huge area, but it is a lot more efficient than your headlamp, and you have to make a very good use of them to be able to see not only what you're looking to mine, but the hazards that exist. And these hazards come in many forms, from fall hazards, to hazardous plant life, to weird creepy things that linger in the roof that want to eat you. <sighs> and we're on the topic of hazards, the local inhabitants, the bugs, are definitely the worst of them. The game refers to them as glyphids, and they, like the caves, come in many shapes and sizes. These can vary from the most basic form, the glyphid grunt, to variations like web spitters, slashers, guards, and some larger, more difficult to kill ones like the Praetorian or the glyphid dreadnought. Just to name a few. The game also includes some static creatures that don't move like spitballers, the aforementioned cave leech, and a few others. The game uses procedural generation to create the caves and manages the threat presented to you dynamically as the game progresses. If you stray too far from your group, you'll find more bugs will be coming your way. It also likes to try and make them sneak up on you. It is very cleverly balanced and gets the ratio of action-packed, fighting for your life combat to catching your breath absolutely perfect. This leads to many hours of back-to-back -back gameplay where you just can't turn it off. There are four playable character classes, the Scout, the Engineer, the Driller, and the Gunner. Each with their own set of primary and secondary weapons and include a few class-related tools and their own unique grenades as well. We'll get into the class customization more a bit later, but there is a loadout for every playstyle and the game rewards you for playing to your strengths. There is no dead set way that a loadout needs to be made, and this is a good thing. The Scout is capable of delivering high damage to single targets and has high mobility. He is also equipped with a zipline gun for quick access around the caves as well as a flare gun. The zipline gun not only provides quick, limitless access to the caves harder to reach spots, but can be used dynamically to your tastes in combat to gain the upper edge. While the Scout's zipline gun is more personal, the flare gun is a lot more team oriented. It differs from the throwable flares as it lights up a significantly larger area and burns for longer than the throwable flares do. It can be fired at great distances and spikes into the surface for accurate lighting, making it a very useful tool to the team. The Engineer has more AoE-focused weaponry. He comes with automated sentries and a platform gun. The sentries are fantastic for laying down to secure an area and get the extra damage on targets and work great also to alert you to the presence of bugs trying to sneak up behind you. The platform gun is a powerful tool, and if the engineer and scout work closely together, you will be able to get all the minerals in the toughest to reach locations. It's also just great for access and getting around the caves as well. The driller is also AoE focused, just in a different way, more crowd control. The driller can choose between a flamethrower or a cryo cannon, burn or freezer target, the choice is up to you. As his name implies, he also has hand equipped drills for drilling and C4 explosive charges. The drills quickly provide access to the caves and allow skipping areas entirely as well as some crafty escapes. 
The C4 explosive is great for carving through areas of rocks or quickly mining minerals, but you will find that most drillers just tend to use it on tougher targets or big crowds. Explosive strikes! Lastly, the gunner. This dwarf is your main source of sustained fire on the glyphids. His primaries are designed for long-lasting fire and throwing a hail of bullets downrange. His specials include a zipline gun and a shield. The zipline gun is very team-oriented and gives the entire team access to remote or hard-to-reach areas. These ziplines are also very visible, so your team can find them a lot easier than, say, a tunnel that the driller made, making them great for quick access and escape in a pinch. The shield generator is also an indispensable tool. It is dropped onto the ground and creates a temporary shield that pushes enemies back and blocks them from re-entering. Time is just right and the gunner can make some clutch saves, alleviate stress on his team, and prevent the team from wiping entirely. There are five playable difficulties, from Hazard 1, which is the easiest, to the insanely action-packed Hazard 5. Each difficulty produces procedurally generated caves and features differing lengths and complexity for an added challenge. There are several regions to play in as well, each with their own unique hazards. For example, the magma core is deeper down and has a lot of heat and lava-related hazards. The sandblasted corridors, on the other hand, presents the challenge of faster bugs, thirsty for whatever water you have in you, to high winds that can blow you great distances. Once in a mission, you have a primary objective that you must complete before you can return, and a secondary for extra experience and bonuses at the end. The environment is fully destructible and leaves how you want to finish the mission entirely up to your team's imagination. Some solutions will take longer than others and be less efficient, but it's entirely possible to do if you have the time. You can also resupply 50% of your ammo through the mission by calling resupply drops. These cost nitra, which you do find in the caves and have to mine. It's unlimited resupplies, provided you have enough nitra. There are also special events that you can trigger. These vary in shape and form and what is needed to be done, but are optional and difficult. You begin in the space rig, and this is where you come between missions as well. Here, you can customize virtually anything to do with your dwarf. Every piece of gear, clothing, right up to the hair and beard style of your dwarf can be changed, even their hats. Heck, even the pickaxe can be modified by finding parts through special missions. There really isn't much that you can't modify on your dwarf to really make them your own. Beyond cosmetic, you can also modify your character's loadout. You can choose through different weapons, customize how each performs through unlock modifications, etc. This gives you the versatility I was talking about to play each class the way you want to play them. All of this of course costs money and minerals, both of which are gained through completing missions. If you find yourself short of minerals, you can buy them or sell them from the mineral trade. The cost per mineral and what you get back from selling them is atrocious, and this is done to prevent players from just buying all their minerals without having to complete missions. It's terribly well balanced even if it does hurt when you push that buy button. Buy the beer that was expensive! There is also a forge that allows players to create custom items through drops gained in the game. Beer to be drunk, dances to be had, and even a barrel kicking game to show off your timing skills. The DLC content also rounds the game off nicely, although it mostly just provides cosmetic features. These can come in flavors such as character skins, flexi-type symbols and chant fonts to show that you paid for a DLC, and some even include the game's soundtracks. You won't gain any real advantage through these DLCs other than showboating, but if you want to show your extra support for the game and get some few flashy features in the process, go for it. Hello darkness, my old friend! This is definitely a game to buy. If you're a fan of the small squad-based games where each character has their own unique abilities, this is a game for you. It's purely PvE, but you wouldn't really know it most of the time the way the game plays out. The massive hordes of bugs and the intuitive AI present a unique difficulty, and even players of mainly PvP games I think will find a lot of entertainment value out of this game. In closing, this is a fantastic game, and I give it a 9 out of 10 on the Stealth Fox recommendation scale. Or just on the regular 10 scale. At any rate, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like and hit that subscribe button to be alerted for future videos. I also stream on Twitch. The links are down below in the description and you'll find my schedule on that link page. Stay safe everyone and happy mining.